every second it's analyzing your face three, four times and it's giving you from the seven emotions a number of it and it's constantly changing. It's also assuming your gender, your age. So it's constantly analyzing your face and checking with thousands, thousands of images and giving you these numbers. So the algorithm, what it does, it takes these percentages and according on the combination of them, the amount of them, how they are organized in the list in this second. So it's a very complex algorithm, but it mixes all this information and converts this combination of emotions into 11 concepts. So we have seven emotions, different ways of being combined in between them and seven concepts that come from these emotions. The algorithm was done by psychologists and neuromarketing experts. All right, welcome to today's episode of the VidTao podcast. This is VidTao co-founder Ian Naj, and today we have a very special guest, Gisela moreno Mayado. Giselle is at getfeeder.com, and they're doing some amazing things with doing emotional analytics of video advertising, specifically short-form video, commercial content, etc. going to talk about some really interesting things involving that technology, and also, super interestingly, for many people out there selling agency marketing services, Giselle is going to provide some insights as well on how they're actually going about scaling this product to their audience. So we're going to get into outreach strategies and many other sales topics relevant to this space. So whether you're interested in psychology, marketing, artificial intelligence, sales, software as a service, you're going to love this episode. So let's dive in. This podcast is brought to you by VidTao.com. VidTao is our free YouTube ad library and spy tool, research tool. It's V-I-D-T-A-O.com. At Vitao, we have close to a million unlisted YouTube video ads that you can search, find, discover how they're doing on a day-by-day -day basis. So you can really see what ads your competitors are running, see ads in different markets that you can model to create new winning ads for yourself, and a whole lot more. It's all there inside vidtao.com. Plus, we have a premium edition. So the database is free to access, but then we also have a premium edition where you have full unlimited access to the database. And inside there, we also provide training. So we also run an agency called Inceptly. That's I-N-C-E-P-T-L-Y, Inceptly.com, where we've managed over $150 million on YouTube. It's a video traffic agency, and we work with everyone from brands like Descript.com, Huel, to real scrappy direct response, info products, supplements, health, beauty, e-commerce, you name it, we've done it and love sharing what we've learned. Every week we drop new training in there, everything from YouTube ad media buying to running e-commerce creatives on YouTube to hardcore tracking and attribution tutorials to really level up your data science game for advertising and everything in between. Right now, as we speak, we're working on a training regarding YouTube Shorts. Um, hopefully we'll be live by the time you hear this. On and on and on. This is our passion is video advertising and we wanna share it with you inside of VidTal Premium. And actually right now, for a limited time, you can get access to VidTal Premium for a very special price. So if you go to vidtal.com, sign up for free, check out the database, upgrade to premium for this very special price so you get access to all of the database and all the trainings. And also wanted to add that at Inceptly, we do free brainstorm calls with clients like you. So if you ever want to get help or ask questions about your YouTube ads, your video traffic on other platforms, we're available to chat. Just go to inceptly.com slash call, C-A-L-L, -L, and set up a time to chat. It's free and we'd love to speak with you. Our team's waiting to speak with you. So without further ado, let's get into the show. Well, thank you so much for, for getting on the podcast. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. So starting with Feeder, this is a SaaS, a software, um, and we are approaching uh, marketing agencies. What we do is with using neuromarketing and artificial intelligence, we can understand how the audience is feeling. So what we do is give a software to our clients so that they can translate the um, clients, the users' micro expressions into emotions. And then with our algorithm, we can uh, translate these emotions into marketing concepts so that we can see in a very clear uh, graphic how a client is feeling, how their engagement is growing or, or how it's getting lost in, in the video. We only analyze um, video content. So now we are approaching content creators as well, but we have a very strong focus on marketing agencies in Spain so far. 
Oh wow, very cool. That's really that's really cool. So so tell so for people who don't know what micro expressions are, like what are what are they? Would you say? So this is something that all humans we have, like something we do without thinking. It's very something that's um, that comes with our you know human nature. Yeah. And when we have any emotion, every emotion is related to some micro expressions. This is related to um, there are seven uh, main emotions according to Paul Ekman's theory. And there are a lot of softwares and I'm sorry, I have all the Spanish words in my mind today. <laughs> that's fine, that's fine. But, and um, these networks uh, in artificial intelligence that they can translate very quickly how the face is changing into different micro expressions. So it's a very, very slight movement in your face that will be related to an emotion. Wow, that's, so, that's really cool. So basically you're able to see as people watch these videos, you're able to see their emotions and how they're changing relative to the content. Yes, with the neuronal neuronal network, you can see that. But this is uh, a network that will only give you like numbers and per percentage. Wow. You can see like percentage of happiness, sadness, fear. So this for a marketing professional, it's not an information that they can use straight away. Yeah. So this is where the algorithm comes, um, takes part. So this numbers these percentages that the system gave us yeah. we pass through our algorithm and then we understand different concepts we evaluate 11 different concepts like um ex like um, validation attention engagement rejection so this type of con of concepts and you can see it uh, frame by frame you can analyze the video and see frame by frame how these emotions are evolving wow wow that's super cool so how do you do you get you get subjects so you get an audience to look at the videos? Is that how it yeah, works? That's the best part about our system is that you can get the link. So when you create a campaign, you give all this information about this is why we are approaching marketing agencies because they are using our system for different clients. Right. So depending on the client, depending on the brand, on the product, they will have different audiences as well. So with our with our system, what they can do, they can transform any campaign, any marketing campaign with a video content into a link. And then they, they will move this link among, among the audience for this client, for this brand or for this uh, product in particular. So then because with neuromarketing, the, the segment you need, the amount of people watching the video is really small. Wow. If you do it in a controlled environment, uh, around 50 people would be enough right. in order to, to have relevant information. So in order to send the link to 50 people, it's relatively easy for a marketing agency to, fi to find 50 people inside their target. They can be oh. very specific and they can find 50 very good you know, targets for that kind of content. And then they will get really important information, some information they cannot get in any other way. Like we always had market studies, but people was asked questions and answers were put in a paper with a pen and inside the box you will put a cross you can easily lie or make a mistake in this uh -huh. type of test. But when you are evaluating micro expressions, there is, there is no way to make a mistake because this is something that you are doing without even thinking about it. Wow. That's, that's cool. So people can't really fake it. Then it sounds like. You cannot because the yeah. micro expressions will always be there. It's something that you, you don't even, you just react uh -huh. uh, in front of the content. You don't even think about it. That's yeah, super interesting. Do you ever, do you ever incorporate the facial expressions with questions? So like you take the old style surveys. Does that ever happen where you combine the two? The thing about our system, as well as I was telling you, you can create a link. And the last part of the process, when the, the user receives the link, goes through the video, the last part, you can also choose the landing page where you are sending this, this uh, traffic. So then if you want to, to complete the survey with additional questions and then double check if they actually match, like wow. when you, you have... Uh, recorded not not really recorded but what you have taken from the micro expressions and what you have taken from the forms you can then maybe check and see if there is you know if they are saying telling the truth in the form because in the micro expressions they cannot really lie but you, you can also use the tool as a lead generation tool because you can call this audience for this creative content ask them to watch the new video for this brand they will be interested and then at the end you can use this uh, last link to send the traffic to the page you want. So if that's a, a landing page for a, with a form for, um, I don't know, for a contest, or if there is um, a discount in an e-commerce page, so you can then use this traffic as well. So it's kind of a double, double function. You get the micro expressions and then you also get them to, you can send this traffic to another page. So, and then you can get this other information if you are interested in that or something else. Wow, that's, that's, that's super cool. That's, I, I never thought about that. That's a really good idea. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> that's very clever. So, so, um, 
Yeah. So, I mean, what kind of, like, what kind of marketing would you say is best suited for, like, commercials or more yes, direct definitely. response? Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. We are very focused in commercials, like um, TV commercials wow. or um, social network content, like Reels. We are right. focused in short videos right now, but one yeah. of the, main functionalities that we are implementing and it's, it's supposed to be very soon for sure in 2023 it's the streaming option so you will mm. be able to have the anal the analysis at the same time as the user is is watching the content so that brings and opens many new conversations with different industries wow so you could basically potentially adjust what they're seeing depending on how they're reacting to what it is exactly yeah. Wow, and that's... we are developing this because some clients are requesting this type of information at that moment you know mm -hmm. so Oh, wow, that's really cool. Um, yeah. So, short, so what about on on mobile devices? Are you are you able to use? Yes, it's exactly the same. Uh -huh. Like because we create this link uh -huh. as as long as the device has a camera, the uh -huh. client, the user will click on the link. And it's really important also to to make clear that the user all the time is aware of the process. Okay. Like there is nothing going on that the client is not aware of. Uh -huh. They need to accept the, the terms and conditions. They need to click that they are older than 16 years old. They also need to manually uh, accept the use of the camera. So mm -hmm. all of this is for data protection issues. And right. obviously we go through all of this uh, when you get into, into the link and, and then the video will start. And then after the, it will go to the landing page that the client has decided. Wow, very cool. So what what kind of um what sort of emotions are people are these companies optimizing for? Like what's what would you say are some some are there any emotions that connect with performance, would you say? In many cases, um, we, we always say that the best way to use our system is to do it in advance and to anticipate right. and, and check the videos before publishing them because then you can see if you are losing engagement, if there is some kind of reject, if you are creating surprise enough or not, and then you can make amends and um, edit the video try it again and publish something that you know it's going to create the right emotion that you want. But also because sometimes marketing agencies, especially, they don't have the time to do all this all this process in advance. So they are also using our tool in order to provide more information in their marketing analysis. Like all the metrics they are now using are very cold, like very, they are mainly numbers, mm -hmm. very quantitative metrics and KPIs. And with our system, they are able to give an additional layer to this information and give more qualitative information and make some kind of connection in between why are we uh, lo losing or uh, making more engagement well because this video is creating this kind of emotion or because we were able to move this uh, the attention of the user one point or two points higher so you, you can start measuring something that so far you were just assuming wow. now you can actually make like some science behind it and say, okay, this is what's happening with our clients. This is what they are feeling when they are watching our contents. And this is how we can improve it. Very cool. Very cool. So, so are you seeing people use it in it to evaluate like, okay, I have 10 commercials or versions, which one am I actually going to run on TV? Is it kind of that function? Would you say? This could be one that would be like really cool because they would use a lot of reactions and for yeah. us that would be great. But many times it's more about I have two different endings or I mm -hmm. doubt in between two different brandings. It's not only about content sometimes because mm -hmm. the thing is that we evaluate video content, but it doesn't need to be a commercial, like a movie, you know, like it mm -hmm. doesn't need to be a video. It can be a carousel of images that you... Mm -hmm that you uh, convert into a video. So for instance, it's also a really good tool for product um, but product testing. Like let's see if our clients prefer this type of product or this one, and then they can choose how to organize their e the e-commerce page or which even some clients, they are deciding which products to import based on what uh, the clients are liking the most when they see these kind of images, one after the other, like, like I don't know, like an e-commerce, but just, just the images, let's say what, it's bringing more emotion in in the client. So then they will choose this product. I'm going to import it. This product I'm going to put in my first page and so on. Very cool. And then how how does it work? Like how do you, you get all this data, like you said, all these numbers, and then how do you actually create stories out of that so that you can, so that these marketers can see, get insights and take action? How does that work? So that's where the algorithm comes okay. from, like takes takes part. And basically, I don't know the exact the exact algorithm. I'll use it in, even if I did, 
I wouldn't understand it because <laughs> I'm right, very exactly. bad at these kind of things. But uh, the algorithm, what it does, it combines, it takes all this information, like the, um, the program, I'm, like the system, the technology I'm talking about that comes before this neuronal network. It gives you lots of numbers, but a lot. Like every uh-huh. second it's analyzing your face three, four times and it's giving you from the seven emotions a number of it. And wow. it's constantly changing. It's also assuming your gender, your age. So it's constantly analyzing your face and checking with thousands, thousands of images and giving you these numbers. So what algorithm, what, what it does, it takes these percentages and according on the combination of them, the amount of them, how they are organized in the in the list in this second. So it's a very complex algorithm, but it mixes all this information and converts this combination of emotions into 11 concepts. So we have seven emotions, different ways of being combined in between them, and seven concepts that comes from these that come from these emotions. The algorithm was done by psychologists and neuromarketing experts. Wow, that's that's really cool. So so you said the so the eleven, uh, I guess very, what would you call it like a variable? I don't know. <laughs> the um, yeah metrics metrics or, yeah metrics yeah. perfect perfect. So met, eleven metrics. So so you mentioned attention. I'm super interested in that. Is that so? This you're able to tell when people are paying attention when they're not paying attention. Yeah, there okay. is actually a really good example that I try to cho- to show in all my demos, which is about this typical uh, 10 second video which is a, a f- um, how you say like a bit of big fright uh-huh. you say like this in english like at the end mm-hmm. like you you are focused it's something random happening and then something really strong happens uh-huh. and this type of video you can see how attention it's not on top at the beginning because you actually you're watching but you're waiting something to happen and then when the scare comes you it goes up and it stays up and then you can see like very clearly how the audience is at the beginning, they they are they have attention, but they are not on top. It's like a level because we have mm-hmm. this score, a scoring system where you can see at which level it is. And then when the fright comes, it's like super high. It goes up because they are, you know, it's like very clear to see in this type of videos. Wow, that's 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 really cool. Do you um so short form video is is interesting for feeder right? Doing a lot of stuff with short form video. Do you see any? Do you ever? Are you able to see the video in context? So like if I have a TikTok ad, could you send a video like to someone where it's going to show up in TikTok or? The thing is that the campaign needs to be created through our system and you will need to send the link. So if you want to post it on, on, I'm not very, very sure about how TikTok works because I'm a bit older, but (laughs) I know in Instagram, for instance, you you cannot post um, a link on a post, but you can post a link on on a story and you can post a link on your bio. So in any place where you can paste a link, you can use our link. So then you can ask the audience to go through that link, but you cannot just send a video and because they need to access through our link, otherwise the system will not be analyzing because of what I told you before, they need to accept the terms and conditions. And they also need to, to give access to the camera manually for all this privacy and, and this type of, of things. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. That's so, I mean, how did this idea come, uh, how did this idea come up in the first well, place? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's really a funny story actually, because well, this is something that my my boss, the CEO, explained the first day I joined the company. Um, the all the story comes from a group of friends. They are all they met all together in a bar, and one of them is sick at home, and he sends a message, and it was a video. They all react like they laughed a lot and so on, but they didn't reply at that moment. Then my boss, the CEO. After a few hours, he remembered he didn't reply and he just said like, haha. And then he started thinking like, this is not really what happened. You know, like I'm not really giving the whole emotion to this because we were laughing for minutes with this video. So then something like in his mind, Feeder was created at, at that moment, no, because he understood there is a lack of information here. So he started thinking this at the beginning, it started like a B2C application yeah. in which I would send you a, a video you would accept the conditions. And then while you are watching the content I send you, your phone would be recording you. Like, uh, wow. Totally recording you, not uh-huh. your like, expressions, but your face, literally. Mm-hmm. 
And once you finish watching the video I send you, it will send me your reaction and it will create a loop of reactions. It was kind of a funny thing to do among friends and they created the application and some people downloaded it and so on. But then with the pandemic, they started uh, thinking that they could give it a commercial use and started thinking about the marketing possibilities that it had because also the the two co-founders one of them is a marketing expert, the other one is a developer. Really? So very quickly they started seeing the, the opportunities that the idea had as a SaaS, as a software, as a service uh-huh. for the marketing industry. So they started developing like a different idea. And then when they, they started with uh, different acceleration programs and so on, up to the point where we are now, in which we are already established and we have agencies we work with, we have a big team and we have uh, the accounts team and, you know, designer and developers and we are growing i joined recently i didn't join a long time ago just back in september but already in three months in the sales part we i I mean i'm really happy with everything that we are achieving that's awesome so so how is it like this is kind of a a unique tool so the people you talk to do they have they seen anything like this before is it well there are several tools in neuromarketing like more related to eye tracking and there, there are different tools in the in the market but there is nothing like what we do. Uh-huh. I mean, also with our the conditions we have right now, being a startup and you know in this like scaling process that we uh-huh. are now. So what we are giving them is a really nice tool that they can use really easily. That it gives them a very precious information because otherwise there is no other way you can really be certain of. I mean, you can see how the campaign goes afterwards, but this is giving you you know anticipation uh, information that you can also add to the other KPIs that you are using that it's giving you like you and your client because for how our agencies are seeing it it's like a way of providing a client with a more complete report at the end of the day you know like for them it's like giving going the extra mile to understand how the audience is is uh, behaving and using this data in order to improve like it's very it's impossible to improve something you are not measuring mm-hmm. and this is something that they were not measuring so far so they can see, they see that they can do it now so so they are starting to implement it and and to use it and and you know to improve uh, their their ROI and other metrics but that's what happens when you understand your audience and when you approach them according to what they are expecting from you got it so how is that just you know coming in september how has the process been you know getting familiar with this technology and then being able to approach people approach companies and then present and you know close them on this like how's that process been and like you mean for the for the sales the yeah sales just your yeah your, your journey so, on that well we are we are receiving some inbound leads as well we have uh-huh. some campaigns like we had this um because of the kid digital in spain this a lot of marketing agencies are providing this service like to digitalize companies so we are receiving quite of interest like from our campaigns but also we use a lot of prospecting i am the kind of sales manager who likes the phone much better than the, than the email uh-huh. and i yeah. like to call my clients and i like <laughs> nice. to speak to them <laughs> and and i have a very good sdr who is arranging a lot of meetings for me like i i have several meetings every day with a lot of agencies and and what we do, it's well, the sales cycle has been kind of reduced a lot since I joined, to be honest, like I am used to, to other kind of uh, sectors and that we're faster. And basically what we do, we meet, we have this demo, we show the system, we explain how we work. As I told you, like the conditions we have now are really, really competitive and they see the value. They see why not to try. Also, we are a service. I mean, you pay monthly. It's worth to try and see and Luckily for me, we also have very good uh, account managers. And when they try the product, they, they see how much they can learn from the campaigns and how well the neuromarketing experts are going to accompany them through the process. Because that's important also, I didn't mention, we don't only give the, the software, we also assign you an account manager who is uh-huh. a neuromarketing expert. And they help you setting up the campaign, but also analyzing it afterwards. So you don't only get to see, like the system is really visual, but also you will have someone analyzing it with you so that you get to make sure that you are getting all the data possible out of every campaign. So we are giving this service. And actually right now, um, as I said before, I didn't join a long time ago, but I can see how we are advancing. And and yeah, I'm I'm really, I'm really optimistic about the future. That's awesome. That's super mm-hmm. cool. So, so at, at how does uh, how did you like how did you get in this into this role? Like what what led you to, to being here? Well, it's funny because I was not looking for a job when I met Pablo, our CEO, 
but he approached me. He explained about the, the product. I was very happily working in my previous job. I was not open to any other, you know, any offer, but I was interested about the product a lot. Right. So I decided to meet him, like in order to understand better what it was. Also, as a user, you know, I was to, I wanted to make sure that no one was using this on me without my consent. <laughs> yeah, it's scary, <laughs> you know, I right? wanted, I wanted to understand yeah. the technology behind it, you know. But then I met Pablo, and he's a very nice man. He explained me all the values of the company, how they were approaching the market, all the opportunities here in this, this type of technology, how we can grow, all the plans that he has for the future, and honestly, it was like, I mean. For me, I was, I was really happy to be offered this this role, and and yeah, afterwards I decided I was living in Malta back then, but I decided to come back to Barcelona. So yeah, and so far I'm I'm really happy I took that decision. But it was more of like a personal connection with with the CEO and the the fact that he really valued my experience and and was really impressed by my ideas that I already had in the interview and and really wanted to have me in the team, and he insisted a lot. <laughs> so nice. At the end, <laughs> At the end, I I came here, which was great, a great decision. That must that must be fascinating to to um, be able to see the psychology in in action. You know, see the like the how the this thing that's sort of like a magic, how it actually produces numbers and like data and that sort of thing. That's 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 so cool. So that must be interesting uh, technology to be to be working with. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, to be, yeah, especially when now, I mean, now I'm very used to the product that we have now. And I mean, it is impressive. Don't get me wrong. I like it a lot, but I'm very used to it. But when I listen to what is coming, like mm. the different functionalities the developers are developing now, like the different, also because we listen a lot to our clients and the feedback they, they ask for. And, you know, they have a very good, very good ideas as well. So when we are developing, when we have implemented these uh, new functionalities I was telling you before, the program, the system will be very different and this will be like a new stage and everything is going to happen this year for sure. Wow. So yeah, very, very excited. Like Any, right now I'm very yeah. used to this, to this version of the product. Yeah. I love it, uh -huh. but I'm, I'm looking forward to the new one because I know that big things are happening. <laughs> so that's funny. So do you, so first of all, do you send, do you ever use this in your personal life, like sending stuff to friends and just recording? <laughs> you, know, you know that I haven't, but I thought about it also because I, at the beginning I had to create my, well, at the beginning I did it a bit, but just among people in the office yeah. to create my account, the one that I show in, in the demos. Mm -hmm. But then in every demo, I, I do go through, through all the, the sales process. Like I show them what the user will find and so on. So I created a few that I use in my demos with my clients, but it's a very good idea actually that we, I that I will eventually do when I have more time I will <laughs> send to my friends just to see how they react yeah test test your uh your your jokes on them that yeah. Yeah. yeah what about so can you is there anything public you can share about what's coming next or is it all I, I would imagine it's it's still private well the biggest thing I think is the, the streaming part that oh, okay I, that's amazing that I already, yeah. that's a very big one but Besides that, like this opens many different conversations that we have already started with with other uh -huh. industries. So, besides this, I mean, this goes together with many other, many other, many other things, many other uh -huh. functionalities. But the main central one is this one. Uh -huh. <clears throat> That's super cool. Um, well, if people want to check it out for themselves and they want to they want to talk to you and get a, get a demo, where can they where can they learn more? Where they where can yeah. they get in touch with you? So they can see more information about the system in getfeeder.com. Getfeeder, it's F double E D E R. Yeah. And they can also send an email to me directly, Gisela at getfeeder.com, or find me on LinkedIn, Gisela Moreno Mellado from Feeder, <laughs> Barcelona. Nice, nice. Awesome, Gisela. Anything, anything that uh, that everyone should know about you that we haven't already talked about? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good <laughs> Well, I don't know. I love sales. I've been in sales for the last 10 years. Uh, for the last four, I've been in, in the SaaS industry. And I want to continue in, in this sector. I am also thinking about my own project, which hopefully I will talk with you about someday. <laughs> so it's still secret, secret, secret. Uh, yeah, that, that one is a, yeah but, but soon enough, hopefully. But I will continue here at Twitter for sure. So yeah, let's say that I am just um, an entrepreneur. <laughs> That's fantastic. So so you've been in SaaS sales for four years. So how have like what what's changed in terms of how you approach things in the past four years? 
how you approach your the sales process? Well, because at the beginning when I started in SaaS, uh, it was before COVID, and I mm. was selling a software for restaurants. Okay. Like having a video call with a restaurant owner was so difficult, uh -huh. so difficult. <laughs> but now <laughs> people is really used to to go online and have meetings. So I would say that's like the biggest change because that was a big challenge. Also, I was covering like the area in Zaragoza and Valencia in Spain. No, well, Valencia is a big city, but Zaragoza, it's also a big city, but the, the area around it is quite rural. So there and there are some restaurants. I was also covering that area. So I had to try to meet these people in a video call and some of them didn't, didn't even have a computer. So oh, I wow. was asking for something quite difficult, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's challenging, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And besides that, what's been changing, it's mainly my role. Like I was doing lots more of calls before. Mm -hmm. now, <laughs> now I'm doing more follow-ups and more like I'm more in the closing part. And, you know, obviously I, I feel that I've, I did the whole thing. But now we started with the SDR team, which is growing also. So my day-to-day -day activities are changing a little bit. So now I'm more focused on training my team and stuff like that. But in terms of the industry, I cannot really say because I work for hospitality What's sector. Off? I work for the touristic sector, selling SaaS, I mean, but solutions for tourism, solutions for logistics. And now I am I'm selling this software for the marketing experts and content creators. That's super cool. And then, I mean, so cold calling still works though, you'd say, like actually getting someone's phone number, calling them up. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Like, especially when you are a startup and you mm -hmm. and you have a very like segmented, segmented target. Like if you really know who is your buyer and uh -huh. what they need, I mean, I think it's much better to just take the phone and call 20 numbers, like the 20 biggest targets you have in your city uh -huh. instead of sending a thousand emails, uh -huh. for sure. Really? Like, at that, in my opinion, at that stage of the of the company, yes, because then you also get feedback. Like sometimes no. they will tell you, "No, I don't want to meet you now because of this reason," and then you understand something else of the sector. And every call, every call, you can get some information either from the client or who to speak with or what's the best moment to call them or any of this information that you can use directly uh -huh. or information about their sector, what's what's worrying them. Like, no, don't call me now. This week, I'm worried with I don't know like black friday was a big issue in this industry for the last week nobody sure. wanted to talk to you there was of a course. black friday coming you know so if you are not an expert in the in the in their daily operations because you are a developer you are you're doing a SaaS, you're selling software you don't need to uh, to be an expert of what's happening in the logistics sector every day of of the week but this week there is an event in madrid no one is going to answer the phone well, so um, you need to speak to people to get this information constantly when you send emails it's a one-way approach it's a one-way conversation they can reply they probably won't on the phone at least they need to say something even if it's being rude to you then you know you don't call them again Wait. because you don't want to make business with them you know <laughs> yeah. for example so you always get information that's why I, I think that at this moment then when you are known when people is talking about you when you go to events when when you are in the tv event then yeah. of, of course you have your campaigns running and you have your email marketing and clients are more or less coming by themselves kind of and then you have your sales to close the sales but when you are opening a new market when you are trying to sell a new product you are even developing the product still because it's not even finished yet you need all this feedback you need to speak with people 100 percent that's so where do you where's the best way to find numbers like if you're trying to get google <laughs> just google <laughs> really? so you call well, the front I, desk what would you many times yes yeah yeah many okay. times just like i i approach people like i'm also you know what i was a receptionist for four years okay so <laughs> i think that gives me some kind of advantage when i was cold calling before because I, you know, I know how to approach like in a nice way. I understand them when they cannot really, sometimes we think that they are being rude to us, but many times they just cannot really transfer the call. Yeah. Like you don't know how that person is. Like sometimes I see on, on LinkedIn, you know, these people like 10 ways to avoid the keeper and blah, blah, blah. And you don't know if you are putting that person in big trouble, you know, mm, like these people recommending, you can pretend that you know his wife and then. Don't do that because that that reception is maybe losing her job because oh of you. Because goodness. you yeah. you never know who that person is and how forbidden it is for them to transfer a call at some moment, you know, and for some people. Wow, so that's interesting. Knowing these kind of small things, I've been able to be very like close to relate to receptionists, and they give me the information I need. That's crazy. And do you, so you, do, you, <laughs> do you train your team on that 
your your team who's doing outbound stuff now? Do you train them on that aspect? Yeah, I mean, I don't ask my team to do anything that they haven't seen me doing first. Got like it. I try to, to, I mean, I try them to be like as natural and as much as they can be themselves as possible uh-huh. because I don't want anyone to feel uncomfortable at, at work, especially when you are calling people eight hours a day. You cannot be all the time like pretending to be someone else. Like you just yeah, need yeah. to be yourself and try your best, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so what I try for them is to be very natural. I don't like them to sound like robotic and like to repeat the same questions, like same sentences. Like just understand what I always say, like to people I train, regardless if they are in my team or every time like the best part of working here sitting in the desk with the phone is that no matter how bad you do it no matter how wrong you do no one is going to die uh-huh. because of you you know so just go <laughs> like, yeah. it's, it sounds silly but honestly many times i think about it like i don't want to make this call i don't know how they're going to answer well you know what no one's gonna die let me call these people and <laughs> see what happens yeah just do it and it's easier much easier than it seems all the times and you that's know, awesome. if it if it's not, then you just hang up and go for the next one. Next that's, one, yep. Yeah. Numbers, num, num, numbers game. Exactly. Yeah. That's funny. Exactly. So yeah. even in this day and age, cold calling still works. That's the takeaway. That's, that's fantastic. for me. Is the number one way of closing sales when you are a startup. Yeah, yeah. For and me, you, yes. And you and you do follow up on on phone too, like hey, just follow up on the demo kind of thing. Yes. Yeah. The, to be very, very honest to you, my mistake these last three months has been that I've, bo- I've done so many new opportunities. I've been speaking to so many new people wow. that the ones that have been becoming clients are the ones who have been following up themselves because I was in this kind of pace. Now, because everyone is so busy with December, Christmas, uh-huh. New Year's, closing the year, I am doing the follow-ups and I have a lot of work to do right now. Uh-huh. Like these weeks are going to be very busy because also I want to call them. I I, I'm going to send emails. I'm going to, you know, send all the information by email again. So they have uh-huh. it fresh in their inboxes and so on. But also I want to call them because mainly I want to understand the reason what's stopping them to work with me. Mm-hmm. And unless they reply that email, which probably they will do, but I don't know when they will have the time to. But answering my phone is just one minute. They will probably have the time to tell me, listen, it's not a good time because of this reason. Yeah. And if the reason makes sense to me, then I will let them leave. <laughs> <laughs> but if it doesn't make sense then... if it doesn't make sense then i will continue calling <laughs> yeah exactly because the persistence pays off that's yeah. cool is <laughs> is it um how like what's what's kind of tools do you recommend for all this follow-up um just managing all this well to be honest i i am searching for new tools like if someone could recommend me like good tools for this uh-huh. i would be happy uh, we are now changing crms like i don't know if i am allowed to say the the names but i okay, guess so yeah. Um, well, I don't know, but the one I am going to use from now on, it's HubSpot, which I've been using in the past a lot. Uh-huh. And together with Salesforce is obviously the two, I mean, Salesforce is an, another league, no? But with HubSpot, I've been able to do everything I need in the past. So now I've been I've been insisting to, to, uh, to f- go for this change. And now, again, December is going to be this very strange month. Uh-huh. I'm going to do all this migration, take advantage of the moment and plan the next year doing all this migration and, and starting with the new system and the new database soon and hopefully we'll be able to do all these follow-ups from there because now I'm doing them quite manually to be honest also because I like to personalize the message a little bit and so on as you see I don't like email marketing like okay. sending loads of emails also because I don't like receiving them I think uh-huh. that's, that's the reason <laughs> to lead, to lead, to lead. yeah exactly <laughs> that's why so I don't see them to be so effective maybe I don't necessarily need to like receiving calls but when the person is nice on the phone, I don't mind giving them one minute of my time, you know. Yeah. But yeah. an email is so cold, I can just delete it. I don't care. So it's a bit related to that. So yeah, the follow-ups, I need to introduce some tools in order to, to make it more automatic. But ho- hopefully with the migration to HubSpot, HubSpot, which is going to be my December's nightmare, yeah, I'm going to be sorted with that, hopefully. That's awesome. That's super cool. So it's, it's just it's so neat to hear the whole you know, the, the software is amazing. And then just how you're approaching getting it in front of more people and it's clearly working. The interest is there. So that's fantastic. Yeah. So, well, well, Gisela, thank you so much for, for having a chat. And so again, so if people want to get a, get a hold of you to check out the software, Gisela at getfeeder.com, right? Correct. Find, find you on link and find you on LinkedIn. 
and getfeeder.com is the is the website to go check out the learn more about the software. Is that right? That's correct. And Gisela is G E S E L A. As sometimes I've been, I've seen it written in so many different ways. So just in case. <laughs> nice, nice. Just so everybody knows. And you're on you're on you're on LinkedIn too, and reach yes. out there. Awesome. Well, thank you so Perfect. much for share, sharing your journey, and uh, yeah, looking forward to hearing how it goes. And also, when you're ready to share your your new project, would cool. be honored to uh, to share with our audience. So. Awesome. I will be happy to come back and discuss it with you. As you may imagine, it's very much related to sales and prospecting and opening new markets. So That's I... <laughs> super interesting to me. So uh, yeah, please. Great. So let's stay in touch then. Thank you so much for inviting me, Ian. Awesome, Jill. Thank you so much. Have a great Bye. evening. Bye-bye. You too. Bye. Thank Bye-bye. you. Bye-bye. All right. Well, thank you for joining us for this episode of VidTal Podcast. Again, my name is Ian Naj, co-founder of VidTal, and really appreciate you having a listen. And it means a lot. So if you have any feedback, go ahead and email us at info at vidtal.com. Love to hear your ideas for future shows, future guests. If you want to be a guest, let us know. Love to chat. Also, just as a reminder, this show has been sponsored by VidTal, which is our free YouTube ad library, vidtal.com. Again, you can go to VidTal and look up over a million ads at this point inside of VidTal. They're all unlisted YouTube ads. You can see what your competitors are running, track the results on a day-by-day basis, find new ads inside of our YouTube ad library, VidTal. And we also have a premium edition of VidTal. So the library is free to access. But for full unlimited access to the library, we have a premium edition of VidTal. We also have training from our Incepli.com agency, which is our sister company to VidTal, where we've managed over $150 million on YouTube. We provide training on media buying, creatives, tracking, copywriting, everything in between. It's all there inside of VidTal Premium. And right now we're running a very special deal on VidTal Premium. And you can go claim that right now at vidtow.com. When you sign up for free, you'll see the offer to join premium and go there and check that out. And last thing, we also do uh, free brainstorm calls with our agency Incepli. Go to incepli.com slash call. And we love brainstorming with you on your video advertising and just marketing in general. Love to chat. So incepli.com slash call, C-A-L-L. Would love to speak with you. So thanks again for joining us and looking forward to the next show. In the meantime, have a great week.